How's it going guys, Vabavir, and over the past few years we've seen foldable smartphones go from being a mere concept to becoming a mainstream reality. And the reason for that is because of all of these companies pushing for that concept to become mainstream. Samsung is sort of leading the path when it comes to this concept with the Galaxy Z Fold 2, but we've got other smartphones from Motorola, we've got conceptual designs from Oppo and LG, and we've got the Royal Flex Pi 2. But I feel like one company that doesn't get the recognition it deserves for being a pioneering sort of entity when it comes to this concept is Huawei. Huawei had the Huawei Mate X ready to go as soon as the Galaxy Fold was about to hit the market. And the reason Huawei's Mate X didn't do as well, I feel, is because Huawei then had to face a very, very tough two years where it lost pretty much everything it had built. Uh, it couldn't use Google Play services officially. And that sort of led to this downward spiral of Huawei products not being as recommended, even though they were great products when it came to hardware capability. I was lucky enough to check out both the Huawei Mate X and the Huawei Mate XS. And in fact, the Huawei Mate XS from last year, I made a TikTok on it, which sort of went viral. I didn't expect anything of it, but if you wanna follow me on TikTok, make sure you do so because I feel like I get more followers there than I do on YouTube. And it sort of becomes more rewarding because more people watch my content there. So if you wanna see any behind the scenes and just me playing around with tech, make sure you follow me on TikTok as well. But with that out of the way, why did the Huawei Mate XS not do well? Well, I think one of the key reasons for it was the lack of marketing material. And number two, that sort of ties in with the whole situation with Huawei. Huawei wasn't making money to actually promote the Huawei Mate XS because no one was buying it. I feel like that was the primary reason behind this whole downward spiral. And ever since then, I think in March or April of last year, we haven't really heard much about the foldable category from Huawei. It looks as though that's about to change. February 22nd is the date to watch out for the Huawei Mate X2, which is gonna bring you the Galaxy Z Fold 2 design from Huawei. And I don't know how I feel about this. I felt like having this diversification of different designs really made the foldable concept one to look forward to. But if now Huawei is adopting this sort of design, there's really no variety to it. And I completely get why Huawei is doing it. The Mate X and the Mate XS didn't do well with its other design. I feel like also because of the reliability and sturdiness of the product overall, people didn't know if it would last for a year or more because the display was literally the body of the smartphone and that wasn't really a very, very smart thing to do. But it looks like Huawei is playing it safe with the Huawei Mate X2. So on the inside, you get an eight inch display. I don't know what refresh rate this display is gonna be, but on the outside, there's a 6.45 inch 90 Hertz refresh rate display. Uh, there was talk that Samsung was gonna provide the panels to Huawei to make this happen, but it looks like Bo now is the primary distributor for the displays and there's no Samsung involved. This is via Ross Young. If you wanna follow him, make sure you do so because this guy knows everything about displays in the industry. I follow him, so he's an absolutely reliable source. Aside from the semi-confirmed specifications of the display, the eight inch panel being a quad HD plus one, there's gonna be a 4,400 milliamp hour battery on this thing. It's also speculated that this thing is gonna support 66 watt wired charging, as well as up to 50 watt wireless charging. I feel like that's a flagship thing to have, as well as the Kirin 9000 5 nanometer 5G processor. So all of this is similar to the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. I feel like the design language of the Mate X2 might actually follow this too. So it might bring in this colorful back, which I was a fan of, not sure about the camera. We don't have any pictures of the Mate X2 from the back. So that's something that's a bit of a secret, but I feel like if there's anything that Huawei is going for, it's gonna look at how Samsung did it, just like how Samsung did the design. And with Samsung doing a similar camera system to their flagship smartphones, it wouldn't be a surprise to see this sort of camera on the back of the Huawei Mate X2 as well. I could be wrong though. They could use the Huawei P50 Pro smartphones back camera system. Um, nothing about that is confirmed. I don't really know how that's gonna look even, but that's something that's a bit up in the air. As far as the front of the actual display goes, we're looking at a punch hole slash pill style camera setup. It's a 16 megapixel camera on the front of the display. Once again, there's only one or two pictures of the actual device, so we can't really speculate much more than that. Something I do wanna speculate though is how the software on this device is going to run. As we all know, Huawei cannot use Android officially. That means you don't get any of the Android services that you get on pretty much any other 
Android smartphone. And the reason for that is, of course, this discussion, this sort of tense situation between China as well as the USA. I'm not going to delve into that in this video, but I feel like the software now is about the right time to release Harmony OS. Huawei has been working on this new operating system that's supposedly going to revolutionize the industry. And I feel like with this Mate X2 smartphone they're preparing, it feels like the perfect platform to launch this into the full-fledged market for everyone to see, for everyone to try out. Now, we don't know how applications are going to work there, how you're going to benefit from Google services. Right now, you've got this thing called App Finder on Huawei services or the Huawei version of Android, where basically you can use App Finder to source different APKs depending on what you're looking for. It's not the best solution, but it's definitely one that you can get by if you're a tech-savvy person. But for someone who's buying a flagship smartphone, you don't want to be actually going through all of that. You want the smartphone to have everything you need without you having to do one or two extra steps. So it's going to be interesting to see how Huawei navigates this thing. As far as the actual camera specifications go, I feel like they're going to be ridiculous with this thing because Huawei is known for having this amazing Leica camera system. And I feel like this foldable is going to be no different from that. But those were my thoughts on the software that the Huawei Mate X2 might run, as well as the overall specifications that you're looking at and the design of the smartphone. Do let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think every smartphone manufacturer foldable going for this design becomes a bit boring and you like the variety? Or do you think this is a good move from Huawei and can really make them compete with the likes of Samsung and perhaps Apple in the next couple of years? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. This was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.